Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. We're going to begin with a couple of verses in Luke that tells us what the Lord has given us to deal with the enemy. Luke chapter 10 verse 1 says, After these things the Lord appointed of a seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. So after he had chosen the twelve, he chose even more, and he sent them out in pairs of two to every place that he would later come. Now, when we jump down to verse 17, it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You see that? Now, when we look up this word devils in the Strong's Exhausted Concordance of the Holy Bible, it's the Greek word 1140. It means a demonic being. By extension, a deity, which is a god. So there's there uh, some of the demons are rulers in the world of darkness, and they're little gods. They got with the small g, not God like God Almighty. And so he says, even those demonic beings are subject unto us through your name. Very important. Through his name, we have power over them. Verse 19 said, Jesus said to them. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Christ has given us power over the devil and all of his angels, and they can't touch you if you stand on his word and use the authority that he has given you in his name. But if you don't have the faith that what Christ said is true, then you're in a world of trouble. And if you are living a life of open and willful sin, God's not going to help you neither. Okay, you have to be in subjection to God in order for God to back you. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, He's referring to the devil and his angels as serpents and scorpions. And he says, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, that's 19. He says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. He said, this is not that big of a deal. He says, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You ought to be rejoicing because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's more important than using Jesus' name to rebuke demons. That's what he's saying to them. Don't get hung up on that. It's very important that you don't get fascinated with demons. And, and that's all you want to learn about and talk about and find out about. And I'm here to tell you, if you do, they're going to make you their special project. So you want to know that they exist in the world and that the God you serve has given you power over them through his name. And that's as far as you go with it unless God called you to be an exorcist, okay? So we're going to see an example of how we have power over the demons through Jesus' name. In Acts 16, verse 16, it says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, which is a young girl, possessed with a spirit of divination met us. That's a spirit that 
tells her things supposedly predicting the future, but in reality, the demons have been around for thousands of years, so they have a lot of knowledge of things. They can't really predict the future. But anyway, this spirit of divination was in this girl, and they came and met Paul and the others that were traveling with her. It says, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So she was causing her master to cash in on a lot of things because of the demons were telling her stuff to tell her master, and he took that information and used it to his, to his advantage. Uh, 17, the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. So the demon was the one who told her about Paul and them, because she had never met them before. Verse 18, And this she did many days. She just was a nuisance. She constantly came around saying this thing to them. It says, But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. So Paul used the authority that Christ has given us to exercise this demon out of this girl. And you and I, if we have faith in God, we can do the same thing. And people that don't shouldn't play with this thing because we have an example of what happened to some so-called exorcists in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19 verse 13 says, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. They thought anybody could do it. If you're not a real Christian, you can't do it. So they said, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches, not who we preach. 14. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests who did so. So these seven sons of Siva, they came and thought they could use Jesus' name to call demons out of a person. And they didn't even believe in Jesus. 15. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are ye? Who are you? 16 says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. So the demons in that man that they were trying to cast out said to them, I know who Jesus is, and we respect him. He's the Lord, and I know his servant Paul, but who are you? And that the demons made that man jump up and beat those seven brothers behind, beat it real good. They went running out of the house butt naked, and with wounds all over them. So this is not something to play with. Like I said, you don't want to get fascinated with this subject and, ooh, everything's demon, demon, demon. I want to know about demons. You'll know about them, all right, because they'll start showing up at your house and you'll wish you had just left them where they were. We have no business meddling with that unless God called us to be exorcists. But if we come in contact with it, we can rebuke them in the name of Jesus and they have to go. Now, if you live in a demonic stronghold, a place where there's a lot of evil and wickedness, you can't go in there and do nothing. Your best bet is just to stay out of there, okay? I remember when I used to preach at the nursing home for years and the other people quit coming and I kept going by myself and I was a young Christian and my life wasn't where it needed to be. I was half-stepping. I, I was a hypocrite. I was still living in open sin, and then I called myself going to go do a little preaching too. And God taught me a very valuable lesson. I was up there one time, and a demon-possessed, a skinny black crack addict man came up to me and said, Minister Porter, Minister Porter, Minister Porter. And he said, Minister Porter, like that. And he touched me, and I felt myself falling backwards. I, I became very weak. And then I come up with that rebuking finger. I remembered. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And he took off running. And every time I came after that, I was seeing manifestations of demons in people that I hadn't seen in years. I seen one little old lady 
about 80 something years old, weak as can be, gets superhuman strength. She threw her walker over, picked it up, and was threatening to hit another lady in the head. I seen an old man levitating up out of his chair. I got my brother, Minister Lamar Porter, to come with me because I didn't know any better. I didn't know we couldn't come in Satan's house and do anything. And I didn't know because I was a hypocrite that God wasn't backing me. So we came in there trying to rebu rebuke the demons and they were just laughing at us. Then I got on up out of there, just quit going. And it took, it took a while before God taught me that I needed to be 100% dedicated to him in order for him to back me. And eventually he taught me that lesson and I quit living in sin and now I'm in good standing with God. I'm going to share another testimony. Um, I'm going to share a testimony with you about this before I wrap this Bible study up. So you can't play with this. This is serious business. If you're on God's side, then be on God's side. The demons are terrified of Jesus. That's something you and I need to know. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And when he, that's Jesus, was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two, two possessed with devils, not one, but two, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So this, the demons had completely taken these men over. Okay, they were infested with demons, had them out there living in the tombs like animals. Verse 29, and behold, they cried out saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know that they're going to end up in the lake of fire. When they saw Jesus come in, they're like, uh-oh. They say, what have we got to do with you, Jesus? We're not bothering you, Jesus. Have you come down here to torment us before the time? Are you going to throw us in the lake of fire right now? That's how scared they are of your God. And you and I need to know that. And that's why we lead them to Jesus. Only Jesus can handle them. We cannot. If you try to take on the devil by yourself, you will lose. And if your life ain't right, if your walk ain't right, and you try to take on the devil, God's not going to help you. Now, I'm going to share my testimony right now. When I was a young Christian, before I learned what I know now, I was newly converted. I wanted to preach the gospel to everybody. I was on fire for the Lord. I'm still on fire for the Lord. I'm just doing it a different way, preaching the gospel by means of the internet. Anyway, I went to my friends and was trying to preach to them. They was out there drinking in the park, and they were, they were making light of what I was telling them. So after they left, like a dummy, I challenged Satan. I said, you pick on those poor little lost people. I said, why don't you pick on somebody your own side? Why don't you attack me? You can't get me like a fool. And the reason why I'm sharing this, so somebody out there to know never to do that. So nothing happened. I went home, but as soon as I stepped into that door, I was taken over by a legion of demons. And I could hear them talking in my body from the uh, top of my head to the bottom of my feet. They were saying, kill your family, kill yourself, kill your family, kill yourself. Uh, and the voice is coming from my arms and my legs, every, kill your family, kill yourself, kill your family. And then I went into the kitchen. I saw my hand pull the the kitchen cabinet draw out and get a big old butcher knife and I was walking upstairs to do what they told me to do and then I screamed out ah! and everybody woke up and came running and my brother and them looked at me and I was on the floor all bent up and they said oh he going crazy he been studying with them Jehovah Witnesses I knew one day uh, he was going to go crazy because you know, you know I was studying with the Jehovah Witnesses until the Lord showed me that was a cult a, a, a little later. That's why I never got baptized and joined it. But anyway, I got up and started running out the door. And I remembered that Jesus had power over them and Jehovah. So I was screaming, Jesus, Jehovah, Jesus, Jehovah, just running out the door. Every time I screamed, Jesus, Jehovah, the demons came out of me. When I woke up, y'all, I was sitting on the steps of a church. It was raining. A, you know, a light drizzle. It was wet outside. I had on no clothes except my underwear. I was just sitting on the step with nothing but underwear on. 
and man, my head was hurting. Then this homosexual man came up, smiling, because he saw me with my underwear on. And I said, Jesus, Jehovah, Jesus, Jehovah, and he ran away. So the next day I was walking, and I was pale as the sheet of paper, man. I looked terrible, and I was wondering why did God let them do that to me. And a little lady who was a Jehovah Witness named Sister Whitfield, I believe. I think it was Whitfield. The Lord used her to tell me. So God uses all kinds of people to do his will. She said, what's wrong with you, honey? And I told her how I had challenged the devil. She said, uh-uh. And I told him how they whipped my butt. She said, you don't do that. Satan is the God of this world. And she showed me 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. So I learned a very valuable lesson from that. Leave the demons to Jesus. Don't you challenge them. Don't be fascinated with him. Don't want to know a bunch about him and, and talk about him all the time. You teach what the Bible says about it. But more importantly, you teach that you have power over them in Jesus' name. And if you're not called to be an exorcist, don't even try to do that job. Okay? They're very scary. Very unpleasant. It's not something you want to mess with. You know, you might end up like the seven sons of Siva or like me. What happened to me earlier before I learned better. So know that Jesus is more powerful than them. And know when Jesus casts out a demon out of a person, if that person doesn't start praying and studying and, 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 and uh, invite the Holy Spirit in, he'll come back with a whole bunch of his friends. Because in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, Jesus said, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Now, this word spirit is the Greek word 4151, pneuma. And it has a bunch of definitions, okay? A, a current of air, breath, blast, or a breeze. By analogy, or figuratively, a spirit, that is, human, the rational soul, by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, etc. Or superhuman, an angel, look at this, demon, or divine God, Christ spirit, the Holy Spirit. So it depends on how the word spirit is being used. That's how you know which one of these definitions applies. And so we're talking about a demon here. So he says, when a demon is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. 44. Then he saith. Then that demon that was cast out says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. I'm going back to that body that I was cast out of. And when he is come, he findeth it empty and swept and garnished. So if that person has not given their life to God and started praying and studying and has been filled with the Holy Ghost, that demon can come right back. Then goeth he, that demon that came back, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So the demons are just having a ball right now. You know, it's all kinds of demon possessed people. And some are possessed at different levels. You got some who look like everyday Joes. You know, they clean cut. Sometimes they're very pleasant. Hi, but there's a demon inside of that person because they allowed it. You got some who are in the worst state, like the two men who Jesus encountered that lived out in the tomb. I encountered a couple of those in my life. I was coming home one time and I had learned better. I had learned a little better, a, a little more about God. I was a, a more mature Christian. I came into 95th Street Station in Chicago off of the red line and it was a demon possessed man growling like a monster and scaring people in the station and they running and screaming and I pointed at that sucker I said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus he took off running so I want you to know that's how you deal with evil spirits and if they attack you in your sleep because they try to do it to me sometimes you don't have to panic you don't even have to talk out loud start praying to God Forget what they're saying. Forget what they're trying to show you and scare you. Just pray to God. Ask God to get rid of them. And they have to go. So you need to know that you have power over them in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to end this Bible study with 
what Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, and 18. He says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, Jesus says, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. That's different languages. 18, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, it doesn't mean that every Christian is going to do this because everybody has a different gift. Everybody's not called to be a healer. Everybody's not called to be an exorcist. But we all can use the power of Jesus' name to rebuke the devil. Every last one of us can do that. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelle. For Zelle, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly and this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.